Old lady walks past manhole and hears a baby cry. Erin was an ordinary 70-year-old woman who grew up in an affluent home. Her father was the senator's counselor who made a good living, so as a child she never missed out on anything. Years later, when Erin was 25, she met the love of her life, Paul. They married in a grandiose ceremony and had a happy marriage for 43 years until cancer swept Paul away. Unfortunately, Erin and Paul never had children because of Erin's health complications. They tried all sorts of treatments that they came across, but when it started taking a toll on Erin's health, they decided they were enough for each other. Without Paul, Erin felt very lonely and she often spent long hours at parks surrounded by nature. One day, she was leaving the park and heading home when she heard a faint weeping sound. She looked around, but there wasn't a single soul in sight except for a man reading a book on a bench. This can't be in my mind, she told herself, looking about for the source of the noise. Suddenly, her attention was pulled to a nearby manhole. Oh my god, it can't be! She exclaimed as she approached the manhole and placed her ear over the lid to see if the sound was coming from there. To her horror, she realized her instincts were right. There was a baby inside the manhole and Erin knew she had no time to lose. She ran over to the man on the bench for help. Please help, there's a baby trapped there! What? Where? He asked, baffled by the sudden distraction. Inside the manhole! She yelled and rushed back to the manhole, the man following closely behind. He helped her lift the heavy lid and as they did, the crying sound grew louder. Fortunately, the hole wasn't too deep and they were able to remove the baby safely. She was wrapped in a towel in a baby tub and didn't appear to be older than three months. Ma'am, we should call 911, the man urged as Erin put her coat around the baby girl. But Erin didn't even listen. Oh dear, she seems to be running a temperature. My friend's hospital is close by, can you please call us a taxi? I don't have my phone with me, she requested, unable to think of anything but the baby's safety. The man called a cab for Erin and the baby and accompanied them to the hospital, where Erin's friend Dr. Linda Morrison examined and admitted the baby. She assured them there was no reason to be concerned as the child would be okay. Dr. Morrison thanked the man for his help and told him he could go home. Thank you for the help. We'll take care of everything and notify the cops, she told the man before he left. Meanwhile, Erin's thoughts were taking her somewhere she never expected. I believe this is a divine message, Linda. I've always desired a child and now that I've found one, I feel like we're meant to be together. Erin, Dr. Morrison said softly, I understand how you feel, but we need to tell the cops about this. You realize that if they don't find the family's baby, CPS will have to become involved, right? Erin felt an odd connection to the baby girl and she didn't want to give her up. But she realized it would be wrong to keep her to herself and deprive the little girl of her family, so she took Dr. Morrison's suggestion. After a while, they called the cops and told them everything. The baby girl, whom Erin called Angel, stayed in the hospital while the police searched for her parents. A week later, the cops finally tracked her parents down, a poor couple who lived in a small cottage. They both had a drinking problem and wasted all their money on it to the point that they lost their home, eventually becoming homeless. One day before Erin found Angel, they were both inebriated and left her in the manhole. They claimed they didn't want to care for her and she was a burden. We don't want to spend a single dime on her. We wish she never came into our life. She was just an accident, yelled Angel's father at the police station. It turned out Angel's real name was Sarah. The officers arrested the couple and it was decided that Sarah would be sent to a hospital run home. Aaron's heart, however, wouldn't allow it. She couldn't bear the thought of Sarah being left alone, but she knew she couldn't be granted custody of baby because of her age. Plus, Sarah would be alone again after her death. However, there was one way to ensure Sarah didn't end up alone. Dr. Morrison's daughter was infertile and she and her husband were willing to consider adoption. When they found out about Sarah, they were delighted to take her in. The adoption process took a while, but eventually Sarah was legally theirs and they renamed her Angel. After the adoption, Erin visited their home, often to help them with Angel. Her adoptive parents, Katie and Henry, were birth working parents. They were eventually planning on hiring a nanny, but Erin proposed she would be more than happy to be the nanny they wanted. At that, Katie laughed and said, We'd instead love to have you as Angel's second grandmother, Erin. You're part of our family as she only came to us through you. You were the angel who saved our angel. Thank you for giving her a new life and a lovely name. So what do you think? Are you willing to take the job? Oh dear, Erin whispered teary-eyed. I would never say no to that. Thank you. Thank you so much.